Today, we're going to be talking about the TikTok Nestorian, or TikTok Bishop as he so proudly touts himself, Marmari Emmanuel, and why we should avoid him. Hello everyone, and God bless. This is Father Mikhail, Father Michael, with another episode of Living Orthodox. And today we'll be talking about the self-proclaimed TikTok bishop, Marmari Emmanuel. Marmari Emmanuel, uh, as far as any record can, can find, was once a member of the Assyrian Orthodox Church, or the Assyrian Church of the East. In other words, it's a Nestorian. And he himself upholds Nestorius as a great saint. He has said as much in some of his sermons. I will only be including uh, two short snippets from this, forgive me, this man's absolute demonic drivel, in which he denies, just as his forebear Nestorius, that Mary, the Theotokos, is Theotokos, preferring to call her Christotokos. And this man's delusion knows no limits. If one was to go onto his church's website, the Church of the Good Shepherd, you can quickly find out that he is his own self-appointed bishop. He broke off from the Assyrian Church of the East in their main communion and established his own with the Christ the Good Shepherd Church in Australia. And he goes on to say in his about section on, on the church website that Roman Catholics, those in communion with Rome, Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox can all commune at his church as they come from apostolic churches. We hear this kind of talk, by the way, out of a lot of, forgive me, a lot of OCA priests who... Uh, maybe struggle with more ecumenistic tendencies, um, that this notion of apostolicity almost works like magic, that being in communion with the canonical church itself mm, doesn't really matter as long as you have apostolic succession. You've, you've got, uh, you know, you've got, you got the special juice, so you're good to go. And that's not entirely it. Apostolic succession matters, but so does remaining in communion with the body that has the power to impart that succession. And whether you're a Catholic or a Protestant, you're watching this, this, this should alarm you. He's telling you to go ahead and break with your faith, to go ahead and, and deny that Jesus Christ is truly the God man. He will call him the son of God, but he will use tricky language to try to support this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you one of a clip from one of his first videos. Uh, on this topic, uh, forgive the goofy sparkly effects. I think the channel that put that up just, I don't know, it's goofy. Do I have a problem when anyone comes and says Mary is the mother of God? No. No. Because I'll ask you this. When you say Mary the mother of God, who is this God? They'll say Christ. When you come to me and I say, Mary, the mother of Christ, who is this Christ? I'll say, God revealed in the flesh. The Word incarnate. So what's your problem? Obviously, when you say Mary is the mother of God, I know that you know that I know you don't mean God the divine alone. Because it doesn't make sense. God, as the divine, cannot have a mother in the literal sense. Why? Because he is the creator of Mary. If God has a mother, then she comes before him. She's greater than him and she precedes him. This is impossible for any Christian with a clear mind and a good conscience not to know this. So obviously you're saying Mary is the mother of God. To you, God is the Logos incarnate. I don't have a problem. So let, can we have a pizza together or a barbecue and move on? The Holy Mother, Virgin of all virgins, the love of my life, gave birth to the Word incarnate. This is God revealed in the flesh. So in this essence, Mary, the mother of God, I love you. So much like Nestorius, this man is a demagogue. He says things that people want to hear. He presents them in a nice affluent manner of speech or in a, in a fervor 
that, of course, appeals to the passions of an individual. The way this man talks reminds me a lot of the evangelical ministers that I had heard growing up as a kid. Um, but the language he's using is tricky. There's another clip that I will show you in just a bit where he says God cannot have a mother. So no, he isn't okay with the term Theotokos. This is a diversion. This is a response because more so I think he's concerned with keeping some of his online popularity. He is rather proud of being the TikTok bishop, as he uh, not so long ago said. So, and, and in all reality, this man's popularity was brought about by his resistance to the COVID measures. And a lot of people who just want to see, you know, Jesus getting name dropped, God getting name dropped, go, oh, see, you know, this is good. This is a victory for Christ. But we have to be careful because the devil is tricky. He never attacks on just one front. He, he attacks on two, at least two. He, he might attack through one very obvious subversive method that will work more with people of the world, but then he's going to work in a more subtle way with people in the church to deceive them into thinking that, oh, you know, he's on the same side as us, really. He isn't. He isn't. And, and you know, he says, oh, can we go get a pizza? Oh, can we just get along now? Can we all just agree? You know, can we just put this behind us and be, be nicey-nicey? The problem is, Marmari, Mr. Emmanuel, we in the Eastern Orthodox Church, and I will even say it, at least in this regard to the Roman Catholics and the Protestants, we are not talking about the same Jesus. If Jesus is not God, if he is just merely the Logos incarnate, which by the way, this is exactly the same language that Nestorius would use. He would say that he is the word incarnate or God revealed in the flesh, which of course at first sounds, you know, oh, okay, yeah, that's true. The meaning behind these terms is totally different. Nestorius holds, and what Nestorianism ultimately is in, the, in its most simple breakdown, is that the Theotokos is merely Christotokos, and he actually prefers that term to say that she's the mother of Christ. That's why he says this. The problem with this is, is that Christ means anointed. It doesn't necessarily specifically refer to, but it doesn't uphold the reality of the divinity of Christ and the incarnation. What Nestorius holds, and what I will also say Marmari Emmanuel holds, is that Jesus is the one that Mary gave birth to, and the Logos is the one who dwelled within him. So Jesus is not one person anymore at this point. He's two. The, the mutable aspects of human nature that we see at play with Christ, Nestorius refers to that as Christ the man. The immutable aspects and the miracles that were worked, he attributes to being performed by the Logos. He's talking about two Christ, not one. His concept of what the Logos is versus our concept are two different things. For us, the hypostatic union is in the person of the Logos, singular, not two. Jesus Christ is one person with human and divine nature. He's fully man, fully God, united in one person. Nestorius sees this as God revealed in the flesh. This is how he worked around it. Nestorius was, although a very affluent speaker, uh, many contemporaries of his time refer to him as illiterate. And when they say functionally illiterate, they don't mean he couldn't read. They mean that he had not read much theologically. He was a talker, a demagogue. How many of these do we see? I mean, th this man is certainly that. But this, this, dear ones, is deception. This is deception at its highest. And of course, because it's deceptive, it will mislead you from the truth. It'll lead you away from who Christ is and from the reality of the incarnation and what it necessitates. It'll lead you down a path of deception and delusion. The best thing the devil can do to get you to fall and not get back, to not get back up, is to sell you the most convincing, near real counterfeit he can. Because at this point, people get comfortable and they don't want to risk giving up what they have. Let's see the next clip. Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And that's why he called her woman, because since it's to do with his blood, and his blood is for the forgiveness of sins, well, the only one who can forgive sins is God. Since God only can forgive sins, therefore God cannot have a mother.
Because he's the creator of Mary. If Mary is the mother of God, then she came before him. She gave birth to him. He was revealing his divinity. As the divine, he cannot have a mother. What are we preaching here today? Nestorianism? There's one hypostasis. There's one person right. in Christ. And how many feces? There are two feces That's in Christ. Right. And one one person. The person is the important part over here. He's the creator of Mary. That's why he called her woman. We need to study the Holy Bible thoroughly, my beloved. Every heretic in the history of heresies has read the Bible, at least in some, to some capacity, maybe not in depth, but to some capacity, Arius did. Hence why he found clever ways to deceive people into believing that Jesus Christ is not co-eternal with the Father and is a creation. Then you have Nestorius, who, again, has this notion that Christ is, what is it? Two persons, technically. He believes this. He believes that the Christ the man was essentially possessed by Christ the Logos as a sort of organ. This creates huge problems, huge soteriological problems. This is why the church held an entire ecumenical council to anathematize and condemn the soul-destroying heresy because it is misaligned from the truth. You know, even at one point when, he was, when Nestorius was uh, essentially on trial for his heresy, he said he cannot describe God as an infant of two or three months. In conclusion, Mar Mari Emanuel's position on Christ is 100% historian. Again, as, as I've said before, he commemorates him, recognizes him as a saint. This is enough. His positioning, and, and with such a view of denying the Virgin Mary as Theotokos, it is akin to denying the divinity of Christ himself. To say that she is not the mother of God, the birth giver of God, it is to deny the divinity of Christ. And if not that, it separates the humanity and divinity from the person of Christ so utterly that they become two distinctly different persons. Marmari Emmanuel does not believe in the same Jesus Christ as the Eastern Orthodox Church. He does not even believe in the same Jesus Christ as the Roman Catholics and many mainstream Protestants. Sadly, Protestants just continue to have their problems. We now got oneness Pentecostals who are just Sibelians. They just believe that the Trinity is three moats. Which is terrible because then that supposes that divinity itself died on the cross. Impossible. But when you realize that a person, an hypostasis, can hold two natures without them mixing or confusing or altering, hence why we say Christ is fully God, fully man, we don't believe he's some strange demigod type thing, you know, it's when we say this that we can say, well, yes, Christ as a person underwent death because he assumed human nature. But death could not contain him because as we say in the prayers, with thy soul as God in Hades. In the great bodily, with thy soul as God in, Her in, in Hades. In paradise with the thief and on the throne with the Father and the Spirit. Was thou, O Christ, who fillest all things the inexpressible. Mar Mari Emmanuel's Christ is not inexpressible. He's limited. And worst off with this Nestorian concept, it denies the words of St. Paul and Timothy, which says that Jesus Christ is the sole mediator between God and man. When you'd separate the natures that much, to the extent that these Nestorians do, there are two Christ at that point. So with that said, dear ones, thank you for tuning in. Uh, a special thank you to uh, my, my producer, my patron producer, Mark A, and, uh, and to all my patron supporters who, through whose support uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure that there are no more mid-roll ads at all in any of my videos. Um, so thank you so much to all of you for uh, joining in and, and supporting the channel. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe for more content. This also helps the channel. This helps it to get around a lot more. It gives it a better place in the YouTube algorithm. Uh, so again, thank you for tuning in. This isn't to say that I dislike Marmari Emanuel as a human being. I dislike what he says. I dislike his teachings. I think one 
distinction I want to make before we go off camera here is that hating a falsehood, hating a position, saying that something is evil does not mean that we're condemning the person. You know, I, I've had people even say this in the comments when I've said, you know, and of course they're the ones saying it when they say something ridiculous. I say, look, that's poor logic, or I'll, I'll even go and say, you know, this is a really stupid thing to say. They take that to mean that I'm saying that they're stupid. No, I'm saying what you said is stupid. There's a there, there's a huge distinction, and I'm going to say it. What Mar Mari Emanuel says is pretty utterly stupid. And so as a result, I'm not saying he's stupid, but I'm saying his positions are stupid. I'm saying they're completely heretical and evil. I'm not saying he's evil. He is a heretic. He's chosen this. But I'm not saying he's evil. But what I am saying is, any Orthodox Christian who is taking his faith seriously, any inquirer who's looking for resources, pay attention. Don't drink a little bit of poison in order to get a glass of milk. It's, it's like a drop of poison in a glass of milk. There's um, one story I'll share here, uh, actually, the, now that I've just thought of it. Uh, Father Cosmo shared it. I can't remember which elder this was specifically. But uh, he had a vision of the mother of God after seeing one of his friends. His friend came to drop off some theological books, scrolls at that time. And so he hadn't quite finished reading it. And so he has a vision of the mother of God. She knocks on his cell door. He opens it and it's her. And he invites her in, but she won't come in. And she says, I cannot come in. Will you have my enemy in there with you? And he goes, your enemy? What, what does she mean? And so he... he after coming from this vision, he sits down for quite some time and he assesses his conscience. He tries to see, am I her enemy? Have I said or done some evil that I'm not aware of? And then upon not finding anything, he goes and he reads through the scrolls thinking, well, I'm going to clear my head. I'm going to read some theology and maybe see if something will come to me then. Well, he gets to the end of the scroll that his friend gave him. And sure enough, even though up to many points, it was theologically on point. At the very end, there was teachings of Nestorius that got inserted in there. And that is why the mother of God would not enter his cell. So he burned them, and then when he had a vision of her, she deigned to enter into his cell. Because her enemy was gone. Nestorius is a heretic. He fell out of grace. If the angels who became demons can fall out of grace... So can hierarchs. So can people who profess to be Christians. This is why we must be careful to walk the narrow path. And if we want to stay on the narrow path, stay away from the one that is broad and appealing. Go through the difficulties. Walk that tightrope. Because the reward is far more worth, worth it, you know, worth the struggle than one could possibly imagine. So thank you. God bless you all. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.